Welcome to the Corporate Treasury 101 podcast. In this episode, we continue to break down checks in our payments journey series. In this episode, expect to learn what does clearing mean and how checks are processed and cleared by the banks, how banks communicate between each other when it comes to checks clearing and balance verification, what a clearinghouse is and mean, and the example of their functioning, especially in the United States and the United Kingdom, and much more. We hope you will enjoy this episode. If this is the case, please rate us on your favorite podcast app. This is the best way to help us, the podcast, and it makes Hussam and I very happy. On another, other notes, we published an ebook. If you are dreaming of finding the book explaining the ABCs of corporate treasury, well, do not search anymore. We got you covered. Head to the link in the description to download it. And the best part, it is completely free. With all that being said, let's get on with the show. Okay, so we've gone through, Guillaume, the, um, how checks work from the end user point of view, right? So mm -hmm. uh, when I receive a check or if I'm issuing a check, how I would do that, the different types of checks and whatnot, right? Yeah. Um, how does that then happen on the bank side? Uh, what's yeah. the processing behind that look like? How does the bank confirm all these things? Yeah, so as uh, we were talking about few seconds earlier, Hussam, this is where it gets exciting. So this is actually a good introduction, this question, to the term clearing. Um, this is a term that we will use more and more through our payments journey, and that is at the center of treasury activities in general. So in the context of a financial transaction, clearing corresponds to all the activities from the moment a commitment is made until it is settled. And by settled, I mean the money is on the account of the beneficiary. Those transactions that are cleared can be um, checks, of course, but also electronic payments, uh, foreign exchange deals, trade transactions, and all the financial transactions you can think of. Long story short, clearing means transforming the promise of a payment, whatever it is, into an actual movement of money from account A to account B. A being the payer, of course, and B being the payee. Yeah, so it's when the actual money moves in the background after the check has been issued. Exactly. From the moment right. it gets out of your bank account, let's say, and it arrives to mine. This is the settling and the process is clearing indeed. Okay, makes sense. So on the back end then, Guillaume, what does that mm -hmm. actually happen in the check? So when you do a check clearance, what happens? Mm -hmm. So clearing for checks is mainly one thing. The bank receiving the check, verifying that the amount written on it is actually supported by a sufficient balance. Those are, uh, those are some uh, tricky words. And, but it makes sense somehow, right? As far as the bank is concerned, if I, Guillaume, go to my bank with a check of, let's say, $100 that you wrote me, Usam. Technically, it is just a piece of paper with a name on it and the number written. So how does the bank that I'm depositing the check to uh, actually knows at the moment I am depositing it, whether you, Hussam, have the money to pay me those $100 or not? Does that make sense? Okay, but then how does the bank verify that? So this is where the checks clearing enters into action. So the payees bank, remember the payees is the one receiving the money. The payees bank will send the check to the payors bank. So this one can control whether there is sufficient funds on the account or not. If that is the case, well, I will receive my $100. And if not, I won't. And you will probably be charged a fee for issuing a bounced check. Yeah, that's what we discussed earlier, right? That the... Uh... If the money is not there, then I get charged for writing a check that got processed, but there wasn't any funds behind that, right? Exactly. If you do not have mm -hmm. a sufficient balance, then the check bounces indeed. But then does the bank have to send that check to the other bank? Is that not mm -hmm. like relying on the postal system and therefore like super long from a processing point of view? So um, remember that uh, we are talking about a, a boomer instrument, right? Uh, so that's, that's maybe how it happens. Um, 
So this is indeed how it's used to happen. Uh, the banks actually sending the physical check to other banks. But now, obviously, and I think it's somewhere around 1980, but I will need to double check these dates. Anyways, so it's quite quite some decades ago. Uh, banks now have a system allowing them to scan the checks and send an electronic version of it to the payers bank for the payers bank to check uh, that the amount written on it is indeed supported by a sufficient balance. So this is what we call a check truncation. But this process still takes time because of all the verifications needing to be done, plus the time to scan the checks in the proper place and so on. Okay, but so if that's an internal account to account transfer, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, but indeed. otherwise these banks need to all communicate with each other, right? So what do they do, scan it and email it as a PDF? Or how do they <laughs> talk between each other? Has it got something to do with Swift? Ah, that's we talked about Swift point. before. So Swift is indeed a way banks communicate between each other. Um, this will be more for international transaction. That's something a bit separate, but you can indeed uh, make the link with this. So mm -hmm. check. Um, the banks can indeed hardly communicate with all the other banks there is in the world, right? Or even if we take just one country, it's hundreds of banks, hundreds of addresses, and so on. So it's not really sustainable. What happens is that the banks use third parties that we call clearing houses. And clearing houses is, again, a very important term. We will not get into the details of what a clearing house is in this episode, but here is how it works for checks. In the United States, for instance, banks actually send a scanned copy of the check to the Federal Reserve Bank, the Fed, who then forwards it to the payers bank for checking. It makes it much easier to deal with uh, because it's only one central entity, right? All the banks need to be connected with the Fed, but not all the banks need to be connected with all the other banks. And that avoids the tremendous amount of connections uh, that will be required. Okay, so it's like a hub and spoke model, we call it, right? So you have the central Fed, which all the different mm -hmm. banks connect to, and then you go through the Fed for each of them. Exactly. So Bank Hussam, let's say, sends the check to um, the Fed first, and the Fed then sends the check uh, to Guillaume's bank to check whether the amount is available or not. Okay, but the Fed is the US specific, right? How does that work in the UK, for example, where I'm from? <laughs> So for the UK, I understand you will ask the question. Uh, <laughs> but so the same system applies, actually. There is also a third party, except here we talk about the check and credit clearing company. And to tackle uh, potentially one of your following questions, all the countries will have such third party and such clearing house. Okay, so it's each individual one. But then even so, then, you still need to send that check digitally from the bank to the clearinghouse company or the fed and then they yeah. need to then communicate it onwards right so then you have a middle middleman yeah. um how long does that take in so more time <laughs> so it got it of course varies uh, from country to country in the best cases this whole process even in an electronic way uh takes two business days and I will say up to five depending on the country and the connection if whether it's a small bank or if there are some additional checks to be done but so more if we talk even more if we talk about foreign currency checks uh, in especially in restricted economies but let's keep it simple here and let's say we are in the domestic market so uh, we will be both living in the US on the Californian coast surfing every day Hussam and we keep the system simple. You issue a check in dollars towards me, and that's how it will take two to five uh, business days. Okay, makes sense. And But I guess it's quicker if it's like internal to the same bank, right? If it's just account to account, you don't need to go via the Fed if it's inside the same bank, I guess. Like always, spot on. Uh, exactly. Yeah, if it's, uh, it, it, and it makes sense, right? If the bank um, just has to check one or two of its internal accounts, then it's much, much, much faster. Uh, so that will be one business day. So the check or the amount wouldn't be credited on the very same day. It will take one business day, but it's much faster, faster than two to five, obviously. Okay, makes sense. And that's, I guess, just to for the bank to confirm that there's actually funds in there, the check doesn't bounce. Exactly. Those kind of yeah. things. Yeah. It's the same, exactly the same checks. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. 